I want to welcome you today to our last study in 2 Corinthians. Tomorrow, we're going to feature a Bible study that's meant a lot to me. It's Romans chapter 1, verse 6, where Paul writes, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And I'll get into that, how it's applied to me, and actually kept me in the ministry at one time in my life. On Thursday, we're going to begin a new study in the book of Isaiah. Uh, I'm going to try to make Isaiah as accessible as possible. I think it's extremely important for our day and time, and I'm going to present that. Now, if you're listening to this video, you need to know you're going to get to hear Rudy Ross. I'm going to interview him. We're going to keep the segments about eight minutes in length, thereabouts. And when we end one, we'll pick up with another, and we'll go on through and try to give you the best that Rudy knows on Isaiah. He's read it over and over. He's written a book on it, and it'll be very interesting. So I'll have an article in the real-voices.com uh, blog, and Rudy will be doing YouTube videos. I hope you like that. I look forward to hearing your responses to that. Now, today, we're going to look at just three verses from the last chapter of 2 Corinthians. You know, AA, uh, and as I say a lot about it, has... 12 steps, and there are three of those 12 steps that really lead us into personal responsibility. Step one, those of you who are familiar can quote it, I, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. But then step, step nine, I've been told by my friends, is a very key one. We made direct amends to people we'd harmed whenever possible. And then step four is where I'm going to lead us in just a second. We made a searching and fearless inventory of ourselves. Now, concerning this moral inventory, I found on the internet the North Point Recovery blog, and here's what they had to say. A major theme emerges from these three examples of the 12 steps towards recovery, namely that recovery is all about taking responsibility for both your past and your future. This means both admitting your past mistakes and recognizing your potential for change. Now, in this last chapter, Paul had this to say to uh, the people in Corinth. Chapter 13, verse 5, he says, Examine yourselves to see whether you're living in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? Now, wouldn't it be tragic to spend your whole life trying to climb up a ladder to success, only to find that the ladder was leaned against the wrong wall. Well, the remedy is to examine your spiritual life. How do you do that? Well, I have actually gone to the internet and Googled AA Personal Moral Inventory, and there's a lot of different websites. You can find one I think that will fit your needs. You'll like it, and you might try it out just as a guide. Another option, and this is they don't, they don't exclude each other, is just to read the Gospels, one page after another, and Matt, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then ask the Lord, Lord, show me myself. How am I measuring up? Not only will you look at yourself, but you also look at Jesus, who will show you how to live it. I, I do both of these, uh, particularly reading the Gospels, but I also every so often just take my spiritual inventory and I find out where I am, and it is very helpful to take me closer to the Lord. Now, verse 9, Paul has a prayer. Here's what he prays for the church. This is what we pray for, he says, that you may become perfect. Wow, that's it. Short prayer. What does the word perfect mean? Greek language, perfect can mean complete, it can be mature, or it can mean perfect or whole. So, when we think about being perfect, or mature, or complete, or whole, who do we think about? We ought to think about Jesus. He was the most perfect person that lived. Now, if you were a part of, have been a part of my studies for a while, you know that we just finished studying Matthew a little while back. And we read Matthew, why? To see how to live a Jesus kind of life. What were Jesus's attitudes? What were his actions? What did he teach? How did he live? We look at that, and we find out, okay, Lord, that's what perfect is. God, help me to be perfect, you can pray. Or you can pray that, obviously, for other people. 
And then finally, there's a prayer. He ends it with a blessing. It's verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Before I pray this, I'm going to pray this for you, but before I pray it, uh, let me just point out that here in one verse you have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Bible doesn't talk about the Trinity, but the Trinity is all over the Bible. Here's one instance of it. Now, to end up, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that we'll all experience your generous and your unmerited favor that is ours because of what Jesus did for us in his life and his death, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension to your right hand. Lord, I pray that we'll know your love, not know it as just an idea in our head, but know it as an experience in our life. And I pray that we will live in the communion, the fellowship, and the participation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your abundant love. We thank you for the great book of 1st and 2nd Corinthians. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks a bunch for being a part of this today. I pray that God blesses you. Tomorrow will be Romans chapter 1, and then on Thursday, it's going to be a time to look at uh, the book of Isaiah. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to interviewing Rudy. We're going to have a lot of fun with it and learn a bunch. God bless you. Have a great day.